Coming up next on The Jeff Crilly Show, you'll meet the author of this best-selling book, Absolution, The Dark Path to Light, His Incredible Journey, just ahead. Many are predicting that the worst is yet to come, which is unfortunate, said one person here. Until now, they've enjoyed the reputation of being the nation's icebox. Watched a burglar in his home this morning by webcam. As a journalist of over 25 years, stories are what make my world turn. Reporting live from the Dallas Newsroom tonight, Jeff Crilly, Fox 4 News. But in 2008, I took the jump from my familiar life and started a PR firm from my home. We're talking about anyone with a camcorder like the one I'm using becomes a television network. We started slowly growing the company and we now have over a hundred clients and we've branched into the world of live digital broadcasting. I now own eight different TV studios and have a huge team. And the stories that I now get to share are sometimes the most important of my life. Life has a funny way of coming around full circle. This is the Jeff Crilly Show. Well, I think you'll agree with me that every single day we come to a fork in the road. We can go to the right or we can go to the left. You make choices as you go along. And sometimes you can find yourself going down the wrong path. And my next guest is a best-selling author. He's a keynote speaker. He's a mentor. He's my friend, Scott Allen Curley. Thanks for coming on the show. Oh, thank you so much for having me, Jeff. Man, absolutely. Appreciate you. So as you kind of look back through your history, when do you remember making the wrong choice on which, which way to go? Whoa. Uh, I would, I would have to answer that question to as early as I can remember. Really? I can't say that I did it intentionally, but because of the way that I was raised and the, the, the important, the, the, the importance that was placed on image versus, versus just being who you truly are kind of molded me into uh, this person who I really wasn't, yes. but I thought everyone else wanted me to be. Yes. So was that a bad choice? Yes. I was probably too young to know that it was a bad choice. I was doing just what I thought I was supposed to do. Sure. Yeah. And, and it just built and, 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 and snowballed and snowballed all the way through grade school, high school, and came to a peak. <laughs> an implosion, yes. you should say, after high school. And I don't want to spoil the book, so let's tease the book. The book is called Absolution, The Dark Path to Light, and we've got a graphic. It's a full-page uh, graphic. One, I love the the, the image. Uh, d describe the book cover and why you, you made it that way. Yeah, I, I wrote the book. I'll back up a moment. The the book was difficult to write. You didn't ask that question, but I'll say it was difficult to write because I had to go back and revisit so many uncomfortable memories. But equally as important was the cover of the book, because as we were talking and mentioning a moment ago off air, that people do judge a book by its cover. And I wrote this book because I wanted to reach as many people as I could to help them see that they too can overcome virtually anything if they adjust their mindset and reimagine their own, their own existence. Sure. So, um, so the cover of the book is actually a representation of me walking from or traveling from a very, very dark place into what becomes a very light, you know, and bright place. And, and if you take a, a close look at the cover, you'll notice that I'm not all the way out yet. Yes. You know, <laughs> so it's going to always be a journey to continue and have, and we have to be intentional. Sure. We have to be intentional. And so, you've, you've become a, a, a very successful entrepreneur, but it wasn't uh, without uh, a lot of like, I like that, that Les Brown quote, it's not how many times you get knocked down, it's how many times you get up. There was a- Muhammad a, Ali said, as long as you get up one more time, yes. then you get knocked down, yes. then you're going to be okay. Okay, I'm just going to, uh, we're going to play a clip of you speaking, and then we're going to uh, dive a little deeper into your background. Sure. Let's go ahead and play the clip. Sure. Uh, born and raised in the Houston area, a little town called Crosby, Texas. Anybody ever heard of Crosby? Yeah. Fair Station. All right. <laughs> Anybody cross pass? Uh, <laughs> if I stole something from you, I'd like to take off. You're going to be mad at me, man. You know, I'm sorry. That's a real possibility. <laughs> <laughs> Look at her, she's like, oh, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that was um, uh, back in the 80s. I graduated high school in 85, made a hard turn to the left, got involved in drugs, criminal 
behavior. I literally lived in and out of the jail system. Literally. When I left jail in the county, I, I left, I, I just went on a little break for three months, but I lived in that county jail in and out. I, probably, I think I've been to jail probably about 40 to 50 times. About 40 to 50 times. Been to prison four times. Um, that last time, that judge imposed his will on me and sentenced me to 35 years. Uh, and at that point, that's when I had to take a look at myself and think, do I want to be of this or do I want to be in this? And I had to choose, choose. Am I going to be in it or of it? I chose when I was incarcerated, I chose to be in it but not of it, just like I believe with you guys. And Scott, we should point out to the viewer that uh, that was actually out of prison. It was. It was. That's one of my passions, talking to the guys and reaching them. And if I might expound on that just a moment. Please. And some folks may have different opinions of this. Um, we all make mistakes, but none of us is a mistake. Yes. And I'm a firm believer in that. And I'm real quick to tell the guys, because I speak at the prisons probably six times a year. Yes. I'm tough on them, but I love them. But I love them a lot, and they know I do. And so I'm real quick to tell the guys that if you did what you got convicted of doing, then you're sitting where you need to be. Yes. But at the same time, it does not mean that you are not worthy and and des deserving of love yes. and deserving of opportunities. And so my goal and my passion when I speak to folks in prison, first of all, they know I did 10 flat years in prison myself. Wow. And, and success, people miscommunicate or misunderstand the definition of success. People, and I have to correct folks a lot about that, especially in the prison units, because they ask, well, how did you make this money and how did you, you know, become successful, quote unquote? And I have to stop the guys and I say, well, wait, let's just stop a moment. Let's define success. Success is not, has nothing to do with how much money you or I have in our bank accounts. Success is determined by how many people you are able to touch in a positive way. Yes. And that is what I truly believe that success is. And I share with the, with the guys that you all are, have the ability to be successful, even in here, even yes. in prison. Well, I remember you telling me off camera that uh, your ego was involved in at the time when you were committing crimes. You must have been telling yourself a story. What story were you telling yourself? When I was going through, let me rephrase that, when I was putting myself through because it was no one's fault but mine. You know, I believe in taking full ownership of all of my failures. But guess what, Jeff? I believe in taking full ownership of all of my successes as well. Amen. And I think that we all should. I think that we all should. And, and so what I was telling myself at that time was that I just didn't know. I didn't know what to tell myself. I didn't know who I was. I spent my whole life trying to be what everybody else thought I should be. My self-esteem was so low that I thought and felt like I had to earn love, had to earn um, validation. Yes. I did not understand that it's something that we as human beings are deserving of just by our birthright. We all are deserving of love. And um, I didn't understand that for a well, long time. What was the turning point for you? Going to prison. Going to prison for the last time. I was that guy that was always able to talk my way out of almost anything. I wrote about it in the book. It's kind of funny about how I was the kid raised in a We'll call it the hood mm -hmm. up until I was nine years old. And all of my peers, my kid, my, my, my friends spoke kind of ghetto slang. Right. Now, my mother, oh, my God, what a character and, and a story that is. And if, for those who read, they'll see that, that she I need to write about a book about her in and of itself. But she of all the challenges that she and I had and we had a lot. That was probably the biggest uh, challenge that I had through my relationship with her. But one thing that she gave me that I am beyond thankful for and grateful for was she had zero tolerance for speaking uh, incorrect English. You know, I was the one little kid, black kid in the all black neighborhood who back in the early 70s, where if you spoke proper English, sure, you sounded you were talking like you were better than or you were talking like a white boy, quote unquote, which I hate that 
cringes me to say those words because sure, we sure. all know that that's absolutely ridiculous sure. to even think that way. And now I believe we've come to a point in our society that no one thinks that way anymore. So she, <laughs> when I would, when she would hear me trying to fit in, she would come outside and she would let me have it. And she just wasn't having me speaking anything other than proper English. And as much as it embarrassed me as a child, I thank her and thank God for her every day for giving me that because that is what gave me my future. Mm. So powerful. Yes. We're going to pull up your website. And as we scroll down the website, let's talk about your overall message. Is the message, it's never too late to make the right choice? That's a, that's a big part of it. One of the messages is, the biggest message is, and I share this with folks when I do speaking engagements, is that, and it may sound a little funny and weird to some folks, but it'll make sense here in a moment. Everyone is guaranteed success. Guaranteed success. And I say that because the law of numbers proves it. This is what I mean. 100% of doors will not be closed 100% of the time. It's mathematically impossible. 100% of opportunities and it will not be denied you 100% of the time. It's mathematically impossible. So the folks who do not realize their success that they're destined for, they've either not quite reached it yet yes. because they've not, they just haven't reached that, that open door because it's there. And I actually like closed doors because every one I knock on is closed. That means I'm that much closer to the open mm -hmm. one, <laughs> you know? Well, uh, growing up in the hood, you had to have hustle. And then when you finally, oh, yeah. when you finally kind of turned uh, your, your life around, uh, you took that same hustle and applied it to entrepreneurship. So tell people uh, how you uh, became um, a very successful entrepreneur. By remaining humble, first of all never being overly impressed with myself. And one thing I did learn by being back in those days, being in the streets and doing all the bad things that people do out there, I never hurt anyone other than myself, not physically at least. Um, but I was uh, good at talking and talk, talking my way into getting what I wanted in the streets. And, but what, what, it, what, it, what I learned from that is that it taught me to think creatively. Yes. And so everything that I do professionally is a bit unorthodox. I'm, so we started the company that I own now, Finish Line Tax Solutions. We started that company with $2,000 and I was virtually homeless at the time. And now we've grown it to the fourth largest litigation for tax litigation firm in the country, the largest minority owned tax litigation firm in the country. Um, Congratulations. And, thank you. I appreciate that. And, but I, I say that not to boast. I say it simply because we did it by thinking creatively and outside of the box. I don't ask why. I ask why not. Yes. What's the worst that could happen? Yes. <laughs> you know? I want to go back to uh, when you go into prisons. Uh, do you feel like you're connecting with them in a way that other speakers are not? Absolutely. I can't speak to how other people, other speakers connect, but I can speak to the response that I get from the inmates. They never let me leave when I'm supposed to leave. <laughs> That's a blessing. It, it is. Um, usually I'm supposed to be there for an hour of presentation and they end up canceling the next presentation, the next one, and I end up staying four-ish hours. And that is what this is all about because 98% of people who get locked up get out. They do. And I think it's so important for us to, to understand and recognize that when that instead of beating them down, I'm not saying that they don't deserve to be there. Understand that if you did the crime, you've got to do the time and man up and do it. At the same time, the, the, I believe that we as a society should invest in these people. So first of all, when they get out, they can contribute yes. and not hurt us anymore. And so that is one of them. That's a huge passion that I have. And I may have gotten sidetracked from the question <laughs> because I tend to go on tangents. No, but that's, um, that's okay. I mean, when you're talking to, to inmates, they, they know that you've walked a mile in their shoes mm -hmm. and um, there's a respect there. And, and hopefully some of the things that you're saying um, are, are reaching and getting people to, to make better choices. Yes. This is something that I share 
with the inmates, and I share at uh, other engagements that I've had that we as human beings, we, have, we, make a, we make one fundamental mistake, and I think we all make it at, at times. We tend to confuse barriers with obstacles. Mm. A barrier is something that you cannot penetrate. You cannot get around it. You can't get through it. You can't get over it. An obstacle is something that you can get around, through or over. The problem that many of us have and the mistake that many of us make is that we confuse the two. Yes. In life, people, some of us tend to believe that there are so many barriers when, in fact, there's so few barriers. Mm. There's a lot of obstacles, you know. Sure. So the way I've been able to uh, live my life and build my professional life is that, by, that I don't see things as what most people, what many people may consider a barrier. I just see it as an obstacle. Mm. I'll, I'll, I'll say I have nine felonies in my past. Again, all nonviolent, nothing sexual, but still, yep. felony's yep. a felony. Yep. And I'm technically not even supposed to own nor work in a company that I'm the CEO of now. Wow. But I just, I'm not the person, and I don't think any of our viewers should think that, uh, should believe that you can't do something because someone else says that you can't do yes. it. We've got about a minute left. So, Scott, look into the camera on the left and talk to the person who uh, sees themselves making the wrong choices and, and uh, how do they need to course correct? What I would say to anyone that's making bad choices is before you make any decision, use what I call the 10 second rule, stop and pause. The reason that many of us get in trouble is because we make decisions in emotionally charged situations. Most of us, and you said 10 seconds, I'll try to wrap it up real quick, that if we stop and just take 10 seconds before we make that decision that our emotions are telling us to make, there's a good chance that we won't make that bad decision. Mm. And there's a great way to end this segment. We're also going to leave you with his website, which is scottallencurley.com. The great Scott Allen Curley. Thanks for coming on the show. Thank you for having me. You bet. That's it for now. We'll see you next time.